John and the four piping grey cygnets worked for twelve months, as they beat into the wind, into the wind, to the sounds over a still and oily sea. Welcome to Epic TV. The French are renowned for producing things that are quite popular. Gerard Depardieu, although he's Russian. Uh, Inspector Clouseau and the Citroen 2CV. They're also very good at making world champion mountain bikers. And right now, we've got Fabian Barrel on the other end of Skype. I'm very happy to be with you guys. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Question number one, have you ever wished you were better at home improvements? Because I've heard that you've got so many trophies, your shelves fell down. That's actually maybe one of the problems, but that doesn't happen anymore as I get all my trophies away and, uh, you know, just trying to build a, a new shop to get all my new toys, uh, doing more motorbiking and get more, more space for my bikes and stuff, so no worries on that one. Okay, but I mean, you've, you've done 17 years of downhill, like sponsored downhill riding, Where, where's it all going? And how's well, it all gone? So, so, you know, like every, everything seems like victories because, you know, when you count all the different races that I've been winning of my career, it's, uh, it's very exceptional. But on the other hand, you know, every race is a challenge. Question number two. Now you've ticked all the boxes. You've, you've got your, your five World, World Cup wins. You've got your three World Champion jerseys. Now you're kind of retired from the, the downhill race scene. Is this just leaving you a lot of time to have affairs? There is definitely a, a, a lot of more time for that, and that's what I had last year. And I, I did enjoy doing all the videos, all the press stuff, going to the, to the all the bike shows and everything. But uh, that's why I got in this new challenge into Andrew because I'm not a big fan of hanging around too much, even if I love to have a great relationship with people and chat with people. But what I love the most is the action, and, and that's why uh, I definitely felt that I needed to have new goals. I'm going to ask you, you, you broke your femur a couple of years back, I think it was. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. The, the weird thing is, um, even though it was a major break, you then came back really quickly and take, took fourth place in South Africa. I got back on the road bike a month and a half after I broke my femur, which was a way too early. Uh, tried to set myself to get back to the Worlds in 2010 in Monsenan. I didn't manage to, to get this target as the femur uh, reconstruction actually took a lot of time because uh, it wasn't a simple break, it was like a full explosion. And my leg is today three centimeters shorter. I think just the determination come by the fact that, you know, we all passion by the risk we're taking and Taking risk is part of the game, you know? It's part of the rules. It is indeed. I mean, what I was going to ask you is how you, how you stay healthy when you're surrounded by so much cheese. As a French guy, something that you must know is that I don't like cooked cheese. So I just uh. Uh, eat it when it's fresh. So I don't eat those raclette, those tartiflette that you guys have in Chamonix. <laughs> and I'm staying away from that. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and cheese is not bad for health, you know, like one of the, the things that you must know is that French food is, is one of the best out there and it, and it is healthy. You can manage and deal with it. Come on. Yeah, you know that. It's much better than fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> fight and talk. Fight and talk. <laughs> Looks like we'll have a little cook off. I said cook off. Question number four, have you moved to Canyon because you want a little bit of German precision engineering? Uh, one thing is that you guys must know is that I love challenges. Uh, when, uh, when I signed with Kona in 2003, uh, I came in this wave as the bike didn't get into a top 20 of a World Cup and we, we, we went a world champion with it. Then when I moved into Mondreca, everything was fairly new. R&D was barely not existing right there because the, most of the bikes were bikes that they were having straight away from Asia. And we start uh, a full engineering process with the zero suspension system, with the summer, then with the Foxy, and then with the forward geometry. And we brought the brand in five years from starting to exist to a proper brand into mountain biking and when when you reach this goal uh, it's it's a huge satisfaction for me but then there is a moment where if you need another challenge you need to go in something new and the reason of the movement is not for the high-end technology even if canyon is pretty un unreal on this side but it's just to have a new challenge and try to rebuild something with a brand that needs my help. Fair enough. Um, you're, another team member that switched to, that's with you at Canyon is Joe Barnes. Uh, yeah. He's based up in Scotland, so I'm guessing right. you're going to get a little bit of chance to, to, uh, to go up there. Have you ever, question number five, have you ever eaten haggis before? Yeah, I did. I actually went in the UK a lot more time than you expect. 
and uh, and been in Scotland actually quite a few times because of Paul William, and uh, and it's been a, it's been a, a great opportunity to you know to meet the culture, see the country, and uh, and yeah, I mean, not the food food is the main problem, is the water, too much water for me. Question number six, and another, I mean, you're a big part of the Mavic team. When you get together, does this friendly rivalry between team members, which might propagate some positivity, ever get to become a punch up? I, I don't think so. I think I think the situation is uh, that uh, we all collaborating together to actually try, in the case of Mavic, to have the best synergy out of that in R and D, in communication, and uh, and I think that so far, if you look all the athletes that you have around the brand, it's uh, it's all leaders that everyone is having his own point of view, and I mean their goal is to manage to manage all that and. Rivalry in the point of view when we're doing R and D and things like that, I, I wouldn't say that there is this point, but for sure that it's interesting to see the the overall discussion that we can have when there is everyone around the table. That's for sure. Yeah, because I mean, I don't know if you can see this, but Darren Berikoff is actually pushing you backwards with a bulldozer. You are on a head-to-head -head with him. You're in a jeep. He's in a bulldozer. There's no way in hell you are going to win. That's very true. That's why if you really look at it, I just let him do. You know that there is sometimes in life where you need to follow the flow. I just let him go and my time will be to be the bulldozer. You've got to earn as much as he has first to buy one. So uh, moving on, question number, uh, question number seven. Um, enduro is the new buzzword. Uh, everything's all about enduro. Do you think the rise, this rise in enduro, the whole market, the, the race scene, do you think it would have become so popular if, if enduro become called, uh, if it had been called trail cruising or you know something really sort of fluffy? The first time that enduro appeared, the name that came up uh, is because um, Fred Glow here actually organised the first enduro mountain bike race coming from a background of enduro motorbike. But I would say that generally enduro is the competitive version of all mountain all mountain is everything that is happening in between cross country and downhill that's what is using a full suspension ride ride up the speed you want enjoy your way down have bikes that are very suited the terrain you are riding and enduro is just the competition that becomes the image of it that's pretty much it so um, I think the name is definitely a big push, but it's like free ride at the beginning. Everyone is using this word everywhere in every direction, and one day maybe we're going to have a proper definition for it. So question number eight: um, Trans Provence is probably one of the, I think, probably one of the best enduro races, a multi-day, six, seven days racing across Provence. Um, it yep. does actually go. I, I looked on Google Earth, and it does go through your back garden. There is two two trails that are coming down on the last day, really close to my house. Yeah. And uh, do you think that's cheating? That it's actually in your back garden? It's for sure an advantage, and that's why today in the overall Andrew, as much as the Trans Provence, if we want to get keep like a certain um, the philosophy of the sport, it will be hard to keep people away from the trail ahead of the event. And that's definitely something that's going to be very challenging to, for the sport is to find the right balance in, in between trainings and proper enduro riding because enduro base is just the fact to be able to go in the trail full speed ahead without knowing it. Well, question number nine, we've got two more to do. You've got this immense, um, immense library in there of skills. What's the best thing you, skill you pull from there and you now apply to your enduro riding? Well, I would say that the, the main thing is to find uh, the, the right position on the bike is the key point. It's, um, if, if you really look, you can, you can learn every bike position into a corner, into a jump, into braking, in, in everything you want. If you don't have the feet and arm at the right place, so basically your stack and reach that is properly set on your bike, you can train everything you want, it won't happen. And, uh, and that's why if I have an advice to give to people is to really analyze the best comfortable position for them to, to ride up and down, um, calculating well, obviously, their reach and stack. Question number 10, do you ever wish that um, France's empire had been as big as the English one? Because our empire was way bigger, which means that everywhere we go in the world, we can speak English. Well, I think it's a huge advantage, but it's making it too easy for you guys. You can see just in one reason, is that you actually don't speak any other language. Well, we try, we just shout. I did learn sometimes from an, a, a Scottish man a couple of words of French, and believe me, that wasn't proper. Yeah, have this haggis! There, well, at least you got to try it. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> so more adventures to come, I take it. Yeah, there is more adventures to come, more video, 
few things coming up and especially a great project in R&D uh, with Canyon that I'm very fan of and I hope that you guys are going to enjoy it and, uh, and cover it very soon. So yeah, the year should be actually pretty full on with, with a lot of projects. All right, that's great. I'm going to say a big thank you to Fab. All right, goodbye guys. See you there. Thank you.